Peace forever and always, and welcome to the first edition of Both Sides of the Coin. I'm the host of this particular program, uh, known here on YouTube as the Mighty Angel Snub Number Seven, aka Angel Snub, and uh, also uh, the Black Dragon. This particular program, we have uh, come up with the concept that it will be a place whereas there are two sides of the coin, you know, a pro and a, and a con. Different, we're going to be talking about different uh, topics and uh, primarily the to bring understanding to the uh, racial issues in the United States of America. And on our first program, I'm going to probably be here, since we don't have a special guest on the first program, uh, I will probably, well, I am going to be devil's advocate, and we're going to interview uh, the student and minister of the Realities Temple on Earth. Uh, I would like for you to uh, please welcome uh, our guest, brother, student and minister, uh, Andre Edmund 69. What's happening, everyone? All right. Glad to see you, brother. And uh, glad to see you too. Yes, sir. And uh, we're going to uh, talk about different subjects and try to get your spin on these things. And uh, we both know we from, but I'm going to play devil's advocate probably with these few questions that I would like to to bring before you. And uh, let's just uh, let's just see if we bring general conversation to the the masses. And I would first like to start off with, with this particular question. Why, why would you want to be affiliated with this thing called the Realities Temple on Earth? Well, brother, first off, um, I would like to say that, um, that I was always aware you know, that, that there was some differences in how people, how different races were perceived in, in society. I didn't really understand it, what it was at that time at an early age, but I knew there was some difference. So through my life, um, I just, I believe in standing up for what's right. You know, I believe in standing up for the underdog, the little guy. And um, I just decided that I want to be a part of something which would help people. And not just only for me, um, but to help our people, man, because me growing up and dealing with different pieces of people of different races, you kind of um, come to the conclusion that being black is a negative thing in this country. Mm -hmm. Not only country, all over the world. And there was a time when it was presented to me to tie them up. And I couldn't I just couldn't do that. I couldn't allow myself to be used, even though I was in position where I was realized that I was being used by white supremacy. I just, I just didn't want to um, subject myself to them type of indignity. Okay. Well, well, I mean, why the reality is temple? I mean, why the reality is temple? Are, I mean, you could, you could, you could probably do the same thing. Could, couldn't you do the same thing out of the church or? They have the Nation of Islam, the NAACP. The, you have the New Black Panther Party. I mean, there's a, a a few groups out there. I mean, this this Realities Temple Ministry. I mean, is only one lonely little guy on YouTube or whatever. I mean, why? What's up with? I mean, how come you can't join somebody that's? A, I mean, really got some credentials out there. What's what's up with this Realities Temple thing? You know, I, I don't understand. Well, this thing for sure is that we know who is uh, controlling the churches. Because so you got to realize that Christian is controlled and censored and uh, pretty much fully under the wing and under the brim of the Vatican. And that's it. Um, they have a system as to where they can, you have to go back and uh, you got to meet certain requirements in order to be considered a preacher or 
uh, pastor or anything like that. But see, you ain't controlled by white supremacy. The Christianity is controlled by white supremacy. The Muslims are controlled by some form of um, religion. It's a religion, not even religion, because religion, it, it keeps us enslaved. It, it, it tells us what to think, how to think, what to accept, what not to accept. And um, it draws us in a line, it puts us in a box. So I feel like the only way we can be free is to have, to be free thinking people and um, to be masters of our own will and destiny, man. Hmm. So with the reality simple, which it doesn't, um, it doesn't have a vehicle of religion and no, that, that, there's no foundation for religion. So it, 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 it gives us the freedom to express ourselves and to accept and reject things. Religion, man, religion is not, religion is a man-made social institution, political institution. And I think as, as long as we um, stay in this traditional mindset as to where we're doing all these things and setting the pace and creating the rules for us that we will continue to be slaves. Hmm. Subjected to other ideas and uh, it's effective in um, trying to be free human beings with the minds of our Okay. Um, I'm, I want to ask you this this other question. I, I want to. I'm going to ask you this in question first. Cut something up. I would like to to uh, for, ask for you to elaborate on. But I want to ask this particular question first. We have a few questions to get over within the hour. I Hopefully we can get that in. I, I, I want to know what is your, how do you feel about this recent lawsuit that uh, was won by the Realities Temple against Google? Well, I think um, that was a very brave and stand up um, act you you, you uh, committed yourself to. I mean, you weren't going to lie down and let these people from Google. And you to uh, to defame your character and make claims that you use in derogatory and uh, speeches towards white people. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the things was hate speech. Uh, brothers like you, Harvey Subway, we lost, uh, and me, we lost some uh, video material because yes. someone flagged us because they wasn't. They just. They accept other people differently, and these ain't always white people. A lot of these people are wrong. People, you know, people of wrong color. Right. Who doing this? When, when you won that lawsuit, it proved that your material. I know your material wasn't hate speech. Mm -hmm. But it goes to show you that Google is not standing up to their policy where they supposed to review. Right. They supposed to review the video and material that was flagged and then come up with a conclusion whether it was hate speech or any other type of um, inappropriate material. So when you won that suit, I think that was a big step. And I think a lot of other people are having problems with Google getting their, uh, getting their material flagged. And if they know that they're not um, spewing out hate speech, that they should also take um, – take up their torch and try to fight, man, for yeah. uh, uh, our right of uh, freedom of speech, man, you know, have a freedom of speech. We shouldn't allow nobody to uh, try to, uh, you know, put a sock in our mouth, so to speak, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm pumping. The people that do those things, that's another way of silencing you, another way of basically assassinating you. Yeah. They just taking you completely about the realm. So um, I congratulate the Reality Temple for that uh, move. That was a great positive move, and that should influence other people to do the same. Now, it, it has been reported that close to 60 of the Reality Temple's channels have been terminated. Now, why do you think that, I mean, so many people, including many Caucasian people, Many people that get flagged, but why do you think that there was such a uh, and it's you know, there was an intense what the word I'm looking for? Why do you think that they chose Angel Snub Number Seven as a target? His voice silent to the point where 
They would sit around and actually spend time targeting 60 chimes and still is a target. Why, why, why you think this particular voice is so much concentration on the false flag and on this one particular person? Well, the answer to that question is real simple. The key thing is what separates all these temple from all uh, video and um, YouTubers out there that's making the video, there's some balance to what we're doing. We're not only condemning white, but we're also condemning blacks just for the part they play. Because see, it takes two to tangle. You know, um, the reality is temple has a realistic goal. And the people that are threatened most by the reality is temple on earth are the very people we talk to. Mm -hmm. The racist people. The Uncle Toms and the uh, self-hating black. These are the people that uh, come on attack with us. Uh, the reality is simple. Get lost the Leo because you're hitting the nerve. Yes. It's the truth to it. Now, if it was some bull crap or it was something that was, if you, if a lot of your materials list or um, just weak, people wouldn't flag it. They were actually trying to ridicule it as much as possible. But uh, the, the material that Reality Temple present to this internet is very realistic and it, it has some strong points. And people can't deny the truth when they see it, even though they don't want to admit it to themselves. Deep down inside, they know the truth when they hear it. Mm. If, they, if they didn't have an adequate amount of intelligence, they wouldn't view the video in the first place. <laughs> you, see the, you see the titles of the video. Right. And that right all attention. So whether they fly out, they still watch. Right, right. And that's the, and these thing, people, that's the only thing you don't have to do is just the material. Just don't watch the material. If you don't like what we're talking about, just change it. Go to another uh, uh, YouTube account or go to another video. Entertain yourself with some of the crap they got going on on YouTube. I mean, it's okay. For people to make videos where people make videos where they fighting and beating each other down in the street, girls, pregnant girls, stomping each other hmm. and stuff like that. People don't want to flag those videos. And I've realized, I came up on a video where a pregnant girl was getting jumped by two other girls over a, a parking lot hmm. in, inside some store. And when you turned on the video, it gave you an option, a special option. I've never even seen this before when I view videos where see this type of material <coughs> you saying that it's okay and basically saying watch it at your own risk mm. you, that's not freedom of speech why would they even allow these people to make these damn videos and all they're doing is showing their ignorance and they and they quick to destroy each other particularly black now when it comes to other videos where blacks are talking about black supremacy uh, they want to kill the white man. You got to realize the white man going to sit up there and let them keep on talking until they put their foot in their mouth. And then they're going to come and snatch your ass up and yourself in one of these states. I mean, one of these uh, federal prisons for some type of terrorist mm -hmm. stuff going on out there. So basically, with other videos, they're not much of a threat. They like the white streamers love to see us put ourselves, make, our, make ourselves a uh, moving target. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got the bulls out right on your back. Hmm. With, with with the reality simple, man, we got some real strong subject and it's realism and some balance there. Yes, sir. And that's that's basically the extent of my um, my observation and opinion on that. Now going back to some of the things that you've already said, and you really haven't said that much in, in the in the last fifty program, but for someone just listening to you, they might call you you racist. And then on the other side of the coin, you might have those those who who uh, know uh, your material and, and 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 listen to you. They might call you Uncle Tom. So this is a split question: How can you be a racist? One group of people, and then another group of people call you an Uncle Tom. Could you elaborate on that? Well, you know, we've been working together for the last three and collaborating with each other for the last three years. And I've been a part of Reality Temple for the last two years. And I'm going to tell you something. That is one of the most <laughs> seventh wonder of the world. It, it makes sense. 
That's almost like asking the person, how could they be in L.A. and New York at the same time? I can't be a racist and then be uh, <laughs> an Uncle Tom at the same time because they're my two opposite things. Yes, sir. People say, well, Uncle Tom, they, 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 go, they go by the old story of the Uncle Tom story. Right. We know what the character of the Uncle Tom story was, but Uncle Tom means what it means. It was a character that he played to the white people. Mm-hmm. But he sucked up to them. But behind the scenes, he was doing more for his people. But to their eyes, they seem uh, cooperative. See what I mean? Yeah. Uncle Tom was cooperating. But uh, you can't be an Uncle Tom and a racist. These are just opinions of people who um, who really don't understand racism, white supremacy. And all these people are ignorant. And then you got a lot of them intelligent. They just want to deceive people. Mm-hmm. They want people to not really uh, do their research, really dig deep into themselves, and, and let go of all the social, uh, how could I say that, input that you was given, that, that, the condition that you was given from your social society. Sometimes we got to let all those things go, just like you peel an a, a, a onion down to the bottom. Layer on layer and layer, then you got to start all over again, and you got to build your own self up. But you got to have dreams. You got to have honesty to yourself and your world. You have to be able to take a mortuary of self. And when you do those two things, you'll come to the third thing. The more you understand yourself, the more you understand other people. You can't understand other people if you don't understand yourself, man. Mm. So um, it's just ridiculous, you know, to be, you can't be an Uncle Tom, uh, a racist at the same time, man. It's just white, like the black supremacists, they call us Uncle Tom, not talking to killing white people and our Haiti and mm-hmm. using all these hateful uh, speeches and statements. Uh, then you got the white racists who call us racist because we speaking out against racism. We're not speaking out against all white people. We are speaking out against white people. Yes. So when we speak out against white people and the white supremacist mindset, you have a lot of white people who view themselves as racist and don't believe themselves racist. Speak it up either for themselves or speak it up to their family member because they're a white person. Not one white person right now alive in this country that don't know another white person that hate, hate Mexicans or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, they hear it all the time. And those are the type of people that I'm more or less, I'm a uh, people towards because you allow these people to continue to perpetuate this type of uh, mentality, man. Mm-hmm. That's just like a man who uh, see another man burning And now it's a forest fire. Hmm. And uh, you don't say nothing about it. You don't do nothing about it. And then you got some fools that even make an excuse up for something that somebody else did. Hmm. I believe those people are just as much uh, 
and uh, contribute to the uh, to the downfall, man, of uh, a mankind and civilization, just by taking that position where they just want to wink at the wall and uh, don't want to involve themselves with that type of thing. Well, you know, under the under the law, they would call that an accessory to the crime. Exactly. Because, because you don't have to participate in the crime if you see a crime going on, or if you just in the if you if you driving the car or or if you if you if you are just some way involved in it and you have knowledge of a crime being done, they call you an accessory. They call you an accessory. And, to and being an accessory, you can be charged with the same crime as the people who actually participated in the activity of that crime. Yeah. If Tali, if I heard a black brother say, I'm gonna go kill this white dude, I'm gonna do everything I can to try to stay. Mm-hmm. Even if I have to involve law enforcement to come in and do their job, I, that's just the right thing to do, man. Mm -hmm. It's vice versa for white people mm -hmm. because we can't be one-sided, man, and one-dimensional in this in this thing, man. You know, uh, you're an accessory to the crime. You sit up there and let somebody do something or knowing these things are taking place and you don't do nothing about it. Right. Just like I'm an accessory to the fact that there's guys in the neighborhood selling drugs, shooting people and all that old stuff. And uh, I sit back and just turn my head and when they get to shooting, I hit the floor, make sure I don't get shot, you know. Uh, and you usually know who's doing these things. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's dangerous to put, involve yourself directly with those things. So um, we are all accessories to something mm. in one form or another. But when it comes to these type of things, I think it should, if white people are not racist, they should be honest with themselves. They should be totally, completely honest with themselves with the, um, the extent of its effect, man, on people, man. Mm -hmm. Because I don't affect African Americans negatively, but it affects them too in a negative way. Because it, they, 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 they moral standards, it just, it's out of whack, man. Well, you do know that fear has a lot to do with these things also. I had a uh, one of my subscribers who was a uh, white guy, person, Caucasian person, and they wrote me and said honestly that they agree with everything I'm saying, but they are afraid. You know, they're afraid to, to come out and, and say anything or do anything because they, they are afraid. That's what they told me. Yeah. Well, those type of people, man, when they do step out, they're going to be treated worse than the very people that they there have been incidents back in the 50s and 60s where there was a black, white, two dark. Mm -hmm. There was a white woman that was driving with one of the civil rights. Right. They, they, they don't really play this one. It was a white woman that got shot up in a car somewhere in Alabama mm -hmm. because she was supporting and driving these people around to their meetings, their civil rights meetings. This was back in the 50s and 60s. You know, um, I heard, I don't, don't know what you're talking about. Don't quote me on it, but uh, yeah, I mean, so they're going to put themselves in a position to where they're going to target too. So I don't think that they, they want to, um, I don't and think they want to take that risk. And you know something else, see, a lot of them, they won't tell you that. But see, a lot of these people are related to folks in high position. That That's part exactly. of the problem. Yeah. You know, that's my grandfather you're talking about. That's my grandmother. That's that's my mother. That's my father. Mm -hmm. So, and I was telling a, you know, a, a, a Caucasian person this. That's why a lot of them well, it's fear, and also a lot of them are actually related to the people that have influence and can really change things as they wanted to. But they're yeah. not because they benefit. A lot of these people who are in power, they benefit from racism. That's how they got what they got. Because, you know, the, oh, I work hard. No, the bottom line is that you got what you got because at the bottom or the root of everything was racism, which gave you a certain advantage out over everybody. That's right. And say they don't want to, they don't like to talk about it. Yeah, you worked hard. You worked hard at being a racist. That's yeah. just that's just the bottom line. And and that and that right there is the key thing that you might have a person that genuinely uh respect other people of different races and don't have these racist views. Mm -hmm. But when you get to talking out about races, you paint a picture of somebody that they love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you get people that talk about I hit him in his mouth. 
Right. You're talking about hitting their brother, their mother, and somebody else in the damn mouth, man. You right. know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful how you deliver your messages and the things that you say. Because this ain't about hate, man. Yes, sir. If we, if we, if we was full of hate, we wouldn't be doing this in the first place, man. Mm -hmm. We'd be out there doing something else. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of these guys, these racist white folk, they come on our page. <laughs> Stalking us, leaving half baked comments, and and um uh just who man they just <laughs> want to create trouble. They they want confrontation mm -hmm. over video. Okay, they sit real safe behind a uh, desktop or their laptop, but they're not gonna express those same views to the man next door mm -hmm. or to the brother across the street. They already know what, what to expect from that. Man. Mm -hmm. They know that there's going to be some repercussions for expressing that type of uh, mentality to people. So they'd rather just get on YouTube and lay that crap down and then uh, try to rise a response from other people. And a lot of these people, they're just doing it for the fun of it. Right. It's entertainment. It's for entertainment. So I refuse to uh, subject myself to those type of people. Every once in a while, I would make comments or I would tell them, thanks for viewing my video. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about hate body, but I can get flagged at any time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Take your whole damn page down. Right now on YouTube, I got, they say I got one strike for hate. They said I got hate speech on there. I ain't never said I hated nobody. Mm -hmm. How could I be a racist? When you know the case, I don't know if you got a question for that one, that aspect of it, but I tell you, here's that's me. I got a girlfriend that's white. How the hell could I be a racist? I mean, there's no way. I don't hate her. She mm. don't hate me. How the hell can I be a racist? I'm not a racist. You believe that black should stick with black, white should stick with white. Her family believe that white should stick with black. I mean, black should stick with black, white should stick with white. But these are, I don't hate them for their viewpoints. That's their viewpoint. They have a right to feel the way they do. You have a right to feel the way you do. I have a right to feel the way I do. And we different on different levels. I eat pork. You don't eat pork. I don't eat beef. You eat beef. But that don't still mean that we have want the same thing. And so we, we still see the urgency mm -hmm. because we understand. We like sort of on the fence. We on the fence and we can see both sides. Mm -hmm. But you got other people either all the way on one side or the other. So they only understand what they're experiencing and they can't really see what's going on, on the other side. Mm -hmm. And one is the, one part is the uh, receiving in and one part is the uh, the giving in, you know. Yes. So that's my opinion on that one. Now, <clears throat> this is a short program, so we want to try to whiz through these next questions. It'll probably fill up the rest of the the, the the hour that we have. Um, do you think that it is possible that uh, Caucasian people and so-called black folks in America, do you think it's possible that they can really get along in this land as it as it is without for real sufficient uh, uh, real ch uh, significant change? Do you think that they that we as a people and they as a people, do you think that we really can get along or it's going to be the same old, same old? Um, that is sort of a, diff a difficult question to ask because I would have to uh, make assumptions, but I will go based upon logic and evidence and present situations and circumstances and then consider the past. And I come up with this because I think about that all the time. The people that are willing to make a change don't have the power to resource. Mm -hmm. And the people who are in a position to the power and the resources to make a change don't feel the need or the urgency to do so. Mm -hmm. I just like me and you working on a machine, and on one part of the machine, I'm putting a, a part in there. 
and then you work on the other part in the receiving end on the part of the machine. So every time you went to go grab that piece, you got something hitting you on your side. The man on the, on, on the giving end, on the feeding end of the machine, is not going to concern himself with what the other guy on the other end is, is, is going through because he over there, that's his job, that's his mm -hmm. position. He just got to learn how to live with it. Mm -hmm. All together, I'd be the other man on the giving end to say, "Oh man, it don't hurt that bad. Just mm -hmm. suck it up." You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the position with wife is that a lot of them, it's not their problem. Right. They're not being affected by it. Right. They're not being affected by it. Only person, a white person, can come close to ever really understanding the depth of white supremacy is when they have children that are mixed, and their children come home and tell them that they calling them niggas and stuff. Then they'll see that it's not all our imagination. See, the white supremacists and some of these dumb Negroes want to think that it's all in our imagination. <laughs> and it's not. Yes, we can get a job. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can work in a public office. Yes, we can be a lawyer, judge, or police officer. These are showcasing positions. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's their primary goal, but in order for you to make it, we would have to uh, we would have to lose our culture. If we was the people that white people wanted us to be a hundred years ago, there wouldn't be no jazz. <laughs> there wouldn't be no blues. There wouldn't be no Elvis Presley, you know, Donnie Marie Osmond, mm -hmm. and all these other people. And I'm not just talking about our experience, I'm talking about their experience. Mm -hmm. We would have been a carbon copy of these white people from the flip side. They want us to mimic them. And a lot of times, in order for you to get anywhere, look at our president. Mm. He has to position himself to where he has to denounce his own mm. uh, pastor, mm -hmm. make statements about black people need to do this and do that. Mm. If you started doing that, you'll, got, you, you'll have white people want to cuff you, take you up under their wing. Mm -hmm. Because see, you talking their language now. You, that you have the same mindset that they do. And when it's all said and done, like that one brother, it's a couple brothers, I mention their name, because mm -hmm. I don't think that's proper. But uh, the brother, he was going through this race with, uh, he, I mean, he was so accessible. Ron Paul, and right. he tried to do an interview. He tricked us. Mm -hmm. He got us on there and made us look like we was invading his... Uh, in all things Paul video. And he tried to make a fool of it, but he don't really realize that they was using him. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So therefore, we can't position, put ourselves in a position where somebody excuse my terminology or the way I'm going to describe it. We can't sit up, drop to our knees and open our mouth unless somebody piss in our mouth telling us it's literally not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then after you didn't ingest it and swallowed it, they said, well, that was pissed. Now you didn't, it's too late now. You didn't <laughs> make a damn fleet fool of you. I'm sorry for using it like that, but mm -hmm. it's just so uh, heinous. Right. And it's degrading. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. Speaking okay. speaking of, of uh, politics, and of course, you know, we're getting ready to, uh, well, this nation, I'm, I'm not really participating. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. but uh, this nation is getting ready to uh, to uh, elect a new president. Actually, they're getting ready to select a president. The president is not elected. The pre the president is selected by the electoral college, and that's right. And the vote is nothing but an illusion to give the people the delusion and the illusion that they are participating in the in, in a democratic system. Of course, we know that that, but uh. What is your position or how do you feel about uh, these uh, political parties and the voting process? And is it really of any benefit to uh, black people in this nation? A politician is in the game for himself. That's number one. They will sing and dance to tell you whatever it is you want to hear just to get that vote. Mm -hmm. They'll come to the poor neighborhoods, kiss the little black babies and all this other stuff. Go to the soup kitchens and the 
the homeless shelters and talking about change and do a little, uh, like I say, showcase and change and make it look like they're doing something. Then once they get voted in office, you don't even see these people no more. So mm-hmm. really, to me, all let me, it's all a crooked game, man. It's a crooked game. Everybody got a a, a card up their sleeve, you know, a card up their sleeve, man. Obama, he, when he beginning, he was supported by the uh, Jewish community in the beginning, and uh, they made a. I, I remember them. I remember. I think it was Time Magazine when they had a picture of Obama back his head with one of those Jewish. Uh, <laughs> things on the back end. And then it came from that point to where when he started making the moves that he made, that there was actually some Jewish, uh, um, some outfit talking about assassinating his ass. Hmm. So to me, Obama, he ain't no different than a pimp in the street, man. Hmm. Okay, so he talked properly, smiled and all that, man. But he's burying the Effective. He can't do nothing for black people, man. If anything, he do more harm than good. When mm. he, when they, when they, see with the white supremacists, they're gonna trick you. They're gonna always try to create an illusion. Anytime you see, give you a good example. I worked a job. It was this white guy who uh, didn't nobody really like him. He was a supervisor. Actually, he was a floor manager on this ship. He wound up doing said something in a racial tone and it was a, too many witnesses and he wound up losing his job and they did everything they could to try to save this man's job they tried to actually say what he said wasn't what he said you know if i call somebody a, a monkey and i'm calling <laughs> you a monkey they want to know why i duty call it was a blood duty call a monkey mm-hmm. so um well eventually they fired him but then again they hired this other guy. He was a black guy. Now, let me tell you how the white supremacists work. They go look for a black guy that's, I mean, just shut. You know them black people that hate their own kind? Mm-hmm. I knew this dude. I knew this dude. Because this guy, one of my best friends, uncle, okay? And I know about his uncle. And he went in there, man, and I say within four months, I. A lot of people lost, black folks lost their job. Mm. See, white people know, the white supremacists know these type of black. They look for these type of black. They want blacks up under them that's going to to uh, do their bidding, man. Mm-hmm. And it looks better unless, uh, I, I would say, uh, it, would, it seemed less racist to them if they could have another person of color Right. Do you in over them? Just like if you look at Kunta Kinte, I mean uh, Ruth. Who the hell caught? Who caught Kunta Kinte? It wasn't the white dude. It was the black dudes caught his ass, and they caught him and held him down like they was doing him a damn favor. Hmm. Um, the other good example in that when he was getting whooped, hmm. it was a black dude yeah. whooping him with that damn thing. Mm-hmm. But when it came down. To him, try kept running the one, running away and running away and running away. It was the white dude tied him up and cut his foot off. Mm. So <clears throat> you got to be real careful how the white supremacists put uh, put fr- out front these blacks. That's basically completely un- um completely under their wing, under their. Uh, over you because once they put them people in place that means it's gonna get worse and worse and worse because now this person here this black person here he, he could do dirt to all the other black mm-hmm. and still use this person to say oh we're not racist even though you are right uh, <laughs> i think i think what it is i think a lot of whites a lot of mexicans and stuff they don't like black culture they hate mm-hmm. black culture 
you know? Mm. And and I, mean, I see it all the time, but nah, he, Obama and them type of guys, they useless. Right? Okay. Um, we could add on to that, but we don't have the time. Maybe we'll go back into the political, you know, the political issue in relation to the black community, maybe on a, another day. I have two more questions. We have uh, about 15 minutes left in this hour. Okay. And uh, we want to go ahead and and uh, see your uh, opinion on, on these two particular uh, response to these two particular questions. And the first one is that there are people who say when black folks stand up for themselves, they uh, remember their ancestors. They seek the damages from this government in uh, representing their ancestors. They are saying that this is nothing but excuse making because you don't want to work. This is excuse making because you're lazy. You want to try to get something for free. So is is this thing that we call black liberation, black nationalism, and the things that we say? Because we're we're we believe that we are simply standing up for what is just. But they are saying that you we're standing up for trying to find some kind of way to make a quick dime. What is it? What is it that we that you're standing for? Are we excuse makers trying to get something for free because we don't want to work? Well, to be honest with you. There are many who are looking for excuses and come up with excuses for their own personal failure. Mm -hmm. And those people are pretty much visible. Um, they're not that very camouflaged. And I already know we see them all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you got a lot of people who want things to, they want all the rights to be wrong overnight. A lot of blacks want all the rights to be wrong all the night. They expect white people to give them an apology for slavery. They expect white people to give them an uh, apology for the position there. But I want to tell them people something. They ain't going to give you no damn apology, man. Mm. Anytime a, a, a unarmed child can get shot down mm. by a person that's not a police officer, mm -hmm. and then every in, all the evidence indicates that he killed this boy, an unarmed child, right. and then they use I would have never thought of this one when I was gang back. <laughs> he was beating my head on the concrete, so I had to shoot him. <laughs> Anytime they take up something that's something so it's man, it's it just no. No, 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 You you can't, man. Say that we making up excuses. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much stuff going on. And these things right here should be these are key things that we point out. And yeah. if you don't try to do something to try to stop this and bring it to the, or bring it to people's attention, particularly black, it's gonna keep on happening. We didn't get nothing. The white man didn't give us nothing. We had to fight for everything right. we got. Everything. Right. And the fight is still going on today. Mm -hmm. You had white people in the 40s saying, well, look, in the 50s, look, why don't y'all just be happy? Y'all could work a job, get paid all roughly around the same amount as we do, and y'all ain't getting hung. Mm -hmm. Now I get the impression of the present day that when you speak out against racism, a lot of racist white people don't realize it, but they they really saying, look, y'all should be happy that y'all ain't getting hung. Mm -hmm. Y'all should be happy that their law saying mm. that y'all should be treated as equal. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though y'all condition is the same as it was, well, actually, it's worse than it was what it was twenty years ago. That's right. That's uh, right. We went from being inferior; they had justified our slavery because we were inferior. Mm -hmm. Then, on the same token, they gave us religion and told us uh, that they were doing us a favor. <laughs> so we was inferior. We was inferior to. We were stupid. Savages. In the 40s and savages. We went from savages to being criminals. Mm -hmm. Now we're terrorists. 
and all these other different negative forces. And and then and, and they and when, if you ever noticed that we don't run media, right? So it, and we don't run newspapers, television, and all these things. So all these things you getting you getting these from uh, the United States media decides what's news and what's not. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to get nothing if they don't put it out there. So mm -hmm. what encourage negative behavior and negative culture in the black community? Mm -hmm. So now from the last 24 years from NWA to now, we all looked upon as a threat to society. We criminals, mm -hmm. we murder, all these different things. So what? That only creates a, a climate or just to take a black man's life. That's mm -hmm. why somebody's not too quick to uh, give us the benefit of the doubt in any situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I want to say another thing with the police. You see a black man that's a police officer. He ain't no black man. He a damn police officer first. Mm -hmm. When these people decide to be officers, they take an oath to put the law before their own individual selves, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of you got some brothers that's cops, man. But they gotta be real careful because they are numbers. Right. When I say brother, I don't mean no black man. Mm -hmm. When I say brother, I do not mean black man. You gotta hide the same. Only way for you to be a brother, you, we gotta be the same, likewise in mind. We want mm -hmm. the same. We have the same goals, and we have the same desires. To, um, we we want to go in the same destination. As long as we're going in, in the same destination, we brothers. It don't make no difference if we came from the same place. Where we going? Mm -hmm. you know, what makes us brothers? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, now, man, we 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 got to keep doing this, man. We can't stop, man. We can't let nobody tell us that we delusional and we being imaginative about this, man, because we know it's real. Yes. Yeah. You know? And they they know that it's real too, but yeah. but they have they have just accepted the their oppression. So oh, well, this is life. This is how it is, and I'm just gonna accept it. Because I can't change, I'm not, I can't change it. So, you know, that's the reason why slavery lasted so long. Because if slaves were more rebellious, there's no way it could have lasted for 400 years. Yes. They, white folks could not have dealt with blacks that was rebellious like that for 400 years. They would so have. They had to, so they had to. So they had to implement. They had to instill fear in mm -hmm. the slave. That's right. number one. They had to instill fear in the slave. Then they had to brainwash the slaves. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they always had that threat of violence that that quick to uh, implement violence or the threat of violence over their head. Mm -hmm. But the number one key thing is deception. As long as I can throw you a bone and make you feel like I'm doing you a favor and then have you in contrast with the field nigga, have the house uh. in contrast with the field nigga, then I'm going to say, hey, look, we treating you good. Mm -hmm. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Then we're willing to sell out and sell out. That it's a lot of people like that today. That type of mentality in the white man and the black man still exists today. They do that. Yeah, they do that in uh, right now, huh? They do the same thing in prisons and jails. They yeah. have a certain group of people they'll give certain privileges to, and they said you don't want to be like them. See, they don't have no no privileges. You see, they it's, it's divide and conquer. These people are the masters of divide and conquer. Yeah, they master the yeah. soccer, man. And I want to say one thing, and I want to be very, very clear. And this is what you taught me. I mean, it's common sense, but you you instilled this in my head that when we say black people, mm -hmm. we don't just say white people. Mm -hmm. Because when we say white people, we talking about all people of the Caucasian race. Mm -hmm. We use and right, you know what I mean? Adjective, adjective I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. To describe a certain type of thing or person. Right. Like if I say I hate blue cars, I didn't mm -hmm. say I hate cars. I right. said I hate blue Blue cars. cars. See what I'm saying? You so, describing the kind of car you don't have a problem with, you don't like. That's right. I just don't want a damn blue car. I want a red one or a green one. I don't okay. want to. Maybe some of these people feel guilty because they are the car that you dislike. Exactly. Exactly. So when you talk out against racism mm -hmm. and you get white people that get sore and claim that they're not racist and they didn't want to get on our page and 
get to talking smack and mm -hmm. or just a person at your job. As soon as you get to talking out against it, they get sore. Look, dude, I said white racist. I didn't say white people. Why right. are you getting sore? I ain't to hear you. You was a nice guy, but I'd be like, look, man, only thing we doing is responding to our reality, man. You That's don't right. walk with me every day. That's right. You know, I read this book a long time ago. It was called Black Like Me. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he, uh, they gave him some shots to darken his skin up. There's another one with a black, a white woman did. Mm -hmm. It was an experiment. This was in the 60s, mm -hmm. early 60s, the late 50s. Check that uh book out. They did this. They could they can give you these things to make your skin dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, these whites in the beginning didn't really realize they went down south. Mm -hmm. And they they said the first three days, they they felt like they could kill themselves. Mm -hmm. I said that because it was that rough. Mm -hmm. He said that he could not even imagine, the average white person could not imagine what would be would be to walk in a black person's shoe one damn day. They wouldn't even even the even the people that's doing all these things towards blacks have no clue what they put us through, man. Mm -hmm. They don't. And non racist people, they putting it through. But you got some blacks who say we're not going through because you know why? Because they got tunnel vision, they've been brainwashed. Mm -hmm. well, there's something that white people have that they're that they're after. So they try to position their minds and put their minds in the white man's mind. Mm -hmm. Ten years, I put myself in the white man's mind a long time ago and didn't like what I understood. And uh I take everything that I've learned from this person and I use it to my and our benefit. I try mm -hmm. to tell us all the time when I was in prison, I was trying to lay a rap down on these brothers, and these brothers just didn't get it. They, they they grew up killing, murdering. All they could ever see was another black man as the enemy. Mm -hmm. You the enemy because you agree what he agreed with, or you an enemy because you rather read a book and sit over there on the yard and read a book while they out there uh, doing whatever it is they do, playing cards or whatever. They always try to find an enemy. Right. We spew so much poison out on each other with each other all the time, man. So, like Neely Fuller Jr. said, the best mm -hmm. thing blacks can do is be, basically, if we're not doing nothing constructive, we need to stay the hell away from each other. <laughs> right. We need to do, because before it's over with, somebody going to be mad at somebody, want to hurt somebody, and kill somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how that shit go all the time, man. Mm -hmm. We got uh, about four minutes left. And I don't, I don't. It probably would take longer. We probably can deal with this in a video or at a late, later date on a, on a future show. But uh, I know that you want to speak to the uh, Latino community for a few minutes. And uh, what is it exactly that you want to, to say to the Latino community? What pissed me off about the Latino community, only beside the fact that I know that mostly. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, look, dude, I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm going to be straight up with you. The Latino community had this idea that, uh, that they could be viewed in the same light as white people. They wanted to do the same thing and be in the same position as white. But once really showed them, hey, y'all ain't nothing but some niggas. Mm. As far as we concerned, then they want to pick up the Martin Luther King torch when they was doing all the marches, and that was just blasphemy. That was just that was a blasphemy to the civil rights struggle. Mm -hmm. Because how the hell y'all gonna fight for a right? These people gonna fight for a damn right to be somewhere they ain't supposed to be. That's just like me going in your building and using all your facilities, your washing machine, your dryer, and everything else, and taking these and. You can't even use the things in your apartment building because the people across the street coming over there using your shit. And then when they find out, and then when they um, when they come to the realization that, hey man, y'all ain't supposed to uh, be using this uh, facility 
Then they want to fight for a right. Hey, well, we've been here all the time. We clean it up. We cut the ass outside. Still, you ain't got no right for being there. Don't give a damn with you. If you ain't got a right to be there, you ain't got a right to be there. I want to tell the law, I come back to the community something. You ain't better than black. Hmm. You're not better than black. Let me tell you something. You listen to our music. You try to talk like us. You try to dress like us. You try to use the same swag as us. But how the hell you think you better than us when you trying to adopt some of our culture? We don't adopt Latino culture. Mm-hmm. You come and adopt our culture. You're not better than African American. Somewhere at some point in time, y'all hear that wait, nigga wake up call and it make you sick and it hurt you the fact that the white man think of you as a nigga too. So I just want you to tell you, man, that uh, before you get to talking down on blacks, you need to take a look at the damn mirror. Mm-hmm. If y'all so uh, proud of being Mexican, wherever the hell y'all come from, go to your country and fight your mm-hmm. side, uh, fight that corrupt system over there. Don't mm-hmm. come over here and when the white every time the white man kick you in the ass, you want to go find some uh, black people to kick them. Mm-hmm. Kill them and destroy them. You need to stop it. You mm-hmm. need to pull yourself up, man. Mm-hmm. That's all I gotta say on that. And that was that really was that's really uh, uh, that's really enough. You know, you have these people that uh, I don't know where they get this from. They 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 become very arrogant, but it also it it comes from again it comes from pink supremacy. I hate saying white, <laughs> I do because these people are not white, because white in in the English language means pure, or holy or righteous. These people are not white. They gave themselves. You know, when Kuta Kente was introduced to white people, they didn't call them, they called them Tuba. And the Native American people called them pale face. They called themselves white. And we began to adopt saying, no, you are not white, you pink. You know, anything you pink. You know, so I, I hate saying uh, white, the white man, all oh, you the pink man or the racist Caucasian. Anything yeah. but white, you know. But brother, you hit it and we right on time. And uh, with this with this video, in our hour, I want to I want to want to thank you for taking the time to uh, subject yourself to this inquiry. Um, this is the first out of many, and perhaps, uh, brother, you would some of the, the later future shows with with our guests. This is two sides of the coin, where you will be able to hear the pros and the cons, and perhaps, you know, brothers and sisters like to debate one another. I would like to find some Caucasian.